M Reels is here for DaVinci Resolve. This is a pack of 50 different effects, titles, transitions that really are gonna make it easier to make those vertical social media clips. Can't wait to show you. Let's go ahead and jump inside Resolve and take a look. Okay, so inside Resolve, after you've installed M Reels from the M Installer application, you can locate the pack under the effects library. Under video transitions, you will see we have 10 video transitions. Coming down here to titles, there are also 11 typography presets. And lastly, under effects, we've included 13 overlay effects, 10 reels, and six split screens. So if you come all the way up to the top and click on toolbox and just search for M reels, this will bring up everything in the pack all in one spot. And we are gonna be working with a vertical timeline today. And just in case you didn't know, to create a vertical timeline in Resolve, it's pretty simple. Over here in your media pool in this empty area, you can just right click and go to timelines, create new timeline. We can give this a name. And then you wanna uncheck use project settings here, and that will reveal all these tabs at the top. And if you hop over here to the format tab, all you need to do is toggle this use vertical resolution. This will flip these two resolutions around. And then under mismatch resolution, this should default to scale full frame with crop in the newer update of Resolve. But just in case it doesn't, this setting will automatically fill the frame if you have horizontal clips. So let's go ahead and hit create. Now you have a vertical timeline. And as you can see, here is a horizontal shot right there. And if I just drop this into my timeline, you can see that it fills the frame top and bottom and we have a little bit of wiggle room left and right. You can do the same thing on the cut page. There's also this drop down menu with several different presets. There's 16 by 9, 1080, 4K, and a vertical option right here. You can also open up the custom settings here. So let's start off by looking at these overlay effects. Now, these are a lot of fun. So check this out, this eight millimeter frame here. This kind of adds this really neat retro frame around your footage. And if you look over in the inspector, you'll see that there are some in and out animations. But as you can see right here, we're not seeing any of those animations, and that's because this has already been edited, of course. And so if you want to show those animations on a clip that's already been edited, what you can do, I'm going to delete this effect from this clip here. I'm just going to right click and I can either choose new compound clip or new fusion clip. Either one of these options will let your clip actually start at this beginning of the cut there. And now whenever I drag this eight millimeter frame onto my clip, you can see that we have this really cool slide in animation. You can also go into the effects and turn off either the in or the out animation or both of them. And you can also change how far this slides. So if we did something like, you know, two, then we would get a little bit less slide on that animation. I really like the film preset here. Let's go ahead and make this one into a fusion clip as well. Let's drop film straight onto this clip here. Now you can see this one kind of slides the footage up and it kind of repeats along this film strip. And you can see that looks really cool. It even kind of shakes just a little bit there. You can go under the effects and customize various settings. So if you look closely, you'll see 4K along the strip here. You could of course customize this to say whatever you want, as well as the size. And you even have some customization over these little rectangles. So you could kind of choose the overall shape. So if you wanted a little bit of a split here, you could just lower the rectangle height and the rectangle width will kind of cut into that strip there. And this one also has a really cool animation that comes in and out of the shot. We've also included this really nice haze effect. This adds a little glow on your highlights. And I wanna put this on the entire edit here. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab an adjustment clip and let's just stretch this out to cover all of these clips. And now we can drag on our haze effect directly onto this adjustment clip. That way it will affect everything underneath it. And in this haze effect, we do have a threshold slider. So if it's kind of grabbing too much of your image, you can increase this. You can also increase the blur and even the tint. Kind of liked it a little bit warmer. And you can see the effect that that has on the footage. I also really like this low res switch here. Now this does a great job of giving you this very realistic, low quality JPEG type of thing. So you'll see that it kind of zooms in on the footage. I'm gonna go ahead and just reset this just to kind of show you the full effect. Now under the JPEG damage quality, you can see if we increase this, our regular image starts to come back. So we can kind of dial in just how much compression we have on this you know, fake JPEG effect. There's also this JPEG damage resolution. Now this is really cool. It's not just a regular mosaic blur. It actually kind of looks 
like real compression. So this could be animated. You could keyframe these settings here and get a very compelling JPEG low quality effect. Next up, let's take a look at these reels. There are 10 reels and these all use multiple clips together. So the way these work is you're going to stack, you know, multiple clips that you want to use in your reel. I'm going to go ahead and stack these five right up like this. Now, this last one you can see doesn't actually fill the whole duration of the rest of these, but that's actually OK. You definitely don't want to have a shorter clip on the very bottom. But if you have a shorter clip on the very top, that's totally fine because that's going to be the last clip that this effect reveals. So we're going to go ahead and select all of these, right click and create a new fusion clip. And let's try reel number four here. Let's drag this straight on to our fusion clip. And over here under the effects, you'll see it says built for fusion clip with five sources. Some of these use four, some of these use 10. This particular one uses five. And it is a pretty heavy effect, especially because it's using five, you know, high quality shots. So I can right click and turn on my fusion effect filter cache right here. And I do have my render cache turned on up here under playback. And let's kind of let this play through and wait for this red bar to slowly turn blue. And you'll see that it has these really cool transitions in between each of those shots that we used to create our fusion clip. So this basically does the whole editing for you. You just throw a bunch of clips together and throw this effect right on and you have a reel. Let's take a look at another one. I'm going to delete this one and let's try number five. Now with this one, you'll see each piece of media has a unique animation style. So if I play through this, you can see the first one slides to the top. Let's say we want this one to zoom in and maybe the next one will slide from the left. Now you can see this one kind of pushes in. The next one will slide to the left. And so you have complete control over, you know, how these different shots animate together. You can even control the animation value here. So for example, let's say on this zoom out, we can change the amount that it zooms from. So you can see now it starts in a lot closer and then still zooms out to the full screen there. So here's what that one looks like. OK, next up, let's take a look at the split screens. Now, these are similar to the reels. They also take advantage of multiple clips. So I've got a couple shots right over here. And before I put these in a fusion clip, I just want to go through and just make sure that my framing is how I like. So you can see this clip, I could probably just move this over a little bit like that just to get more of the main subject in frame. And now let's go ahead and re-enable all these other clips. Now I'll just select all of these, right click and choose new fusion clip. And we can see uh, number one will use five clips. I only created this fusion clip with four. Number two uses three and it kind of does this really neat little vertical split. But number three here will use four clips and I'm just going to drop this on. You can see this one perfectly spaces out all four of my shots into this really neat vertical layout here. So this could be a really great way to show kind of like a before and after of your color grade for Instagram or other kind of vertical social media videos. Now, one quick tip here, if you go into the effects and you try to kind of, you know, recenter these frames, you'll see that it already cuts off this footage, even though there is actually additional pixels on the right side of this particular shot. So what you can do is right click the fusion clip and choose open and timeline. And if I select all of these clips here and go down to the read time and scaling setting under scaling, I'm just going to set this to fit and that's going to resize all these clips so that they fill the entire frame from left to right. And then if I go back to my main timeline, now you can see for the most part, except for this one, because it was filmed in a different aspect ratio, but the rest of these actually show in full screen. So I'm just going to go into my effects and just kind of scale up number one and kind of move this over just to fix that crop issue. And there you go. Now we have a perfect four split. And this could be a really great way to kind of show a before and after color grade. So let me show you how you could do that. So I'm going to open up this timeline once again, and I'm just going to copy all of these clips here and let's paste right next to our fusion clip. And I'm going to make this one a fusion clip as well. And if I just copy this original fusion clip that already has this effect applied, and then I'm going to go to this one here and just right click and go to paste attributes. And then I'm going to select fusion effects. And that's just going to copy over that exact same effect with all the same parameters. And now at this point, what I could do is open this timeline and just reset my color grades on all these shots. So I'm going to go into the color page and just choose reset. And now I'm looking at all the standard 
you know, log versions of all these shots. And then back on my main timeline, I can just stack these two fusion clips together and right down the middle, about halfway through these two shots, I'm just going to split them in half and let's move the before right down like this and we can delete the second half of this shot. And now if I click on this little cut in the middle, I can hit Control or Command T to add the default transition. And then up here in the inspector, I'm just going to set this to edge wipe and maybe we'll choose an angle of 90 and maybe even increase the border width a little bit. And now we have a pretty simple before and after color grade reel designed for a vertical layout. Pretty cool. Okay, next up, let's take a look at some of these typography presets. Now, as you saw earlier, I already put this haze effect over all of my shots, but maybe I don't want this to affect any kind of typography that I might want to add to my project. So I'll just put this on the track below and let's try something like number two here. We'll just put this right on top of this adjustment clip that way it's not affected by that glow. And this one kind of has this nice fade on from yellow. And maybe we want to move the whole thing down so we can come under the content controls and just kind of slide the Y down a bit like this. And maybe even move the subtitle up around there. And of course you could customize all of the text here. You can even change what color it fades in from. You can see it's this yellow, but this could be maybe a red or a blue. I kind of like the yellow. It sort of matches with that haze effect. There's also this really cool typewriter preset number six here. Let's just drop this right on our footage here. And you can see it just types letter by letter and has this blinking cursor and then it backspaces out. If you don't want the backspace, you can turn off the out animation and then your text will just stay on screen for the rest of the comp. Number 11 is also pretty cool. This one kind of has this word by word animation. So let's put this one up next and you can see you can type in whatever you want and it will still animate each word one by one. And lastly, let's take a look at a couple of these transitions. This very first one kind of has this really nice flip book effect. It looks like you're flipping through a photo album and even kind of jiggles on the way out. <laughs> it's kind of nice. We've got a couple of light leak style transitions. Number six is really stylized. Look at this. So this one kind of rip open the frame here like it's a piece of paper and then reveal the next shot. And it has this kind of torn edge with this really cool kind of stop motion effect on the previous shot. It almost looks like you're kind of throwing away that previous shot there. Number nine might be my favorite one. This one has this really cool camera UI overlay that kind of has this exposure dial on there. So this one might fit better right here because she's obviously holding a camera here. Let's see what that looks like. And this one kind of has this rule of thirds grid overlay with this cool little exposure compensation dial kind of in the style of a smartphone camera app. MReels is available for DaVinci Resolve as well as Final Cut Pro available on our website right now at motionvfx.com. I hope you enjoy. This one was a lot of fun. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.